And where is the other one? I never can find anything in this office. Hello, I'm Matt and this is Nine Off Tech and today we're talking about hands-on experience with Son of a POW. And as you can see I've got a POW and I've got sort of basics just to give you an estimate of the size. It's about uh, I'd say twice as big in terms of the volume, uh, slightly bigger and slightly wider than the Son of Basics and performs the same functions as Son of Basic plus one, uh, with that extra one being power monitoring. So thanks to this device you will be able to not only switch on and off your preferred device connected through Sonoff, but you're also going to get information about the power use. And the power uh, information gathered is the voltage, it's the amperage and the current. And thanks to these three information we can ask, um, estimate the cost of electricity used that is passing through the Sonoff. Now by default obviously it is using um, e link app. Uh, but this being a son of, it has a potential for hacking. So uh, I guess uh, the next step would have been just to pop this baby open and see what's inside before we're gonna talk, connect this to a lamp and talk about the uh, connectivity and the eWeeLink e app in detail. So uh, I guess uh, I'm gonna open the app and uh, show you what's inside. So to open this on off, you have to unscrew a single screw. The rest of it is using small latches, so just pry open and you'll be able to uh, pop this on off open. Now the PCB itself is uh, mounted using four different cross screws. So just unscrew them and you'll be able to inspect the PCB itself. Now on the PCB, we have exposed GPIO pins, uh, which is nice because it's going to be very easy to flash it. So we've got 05, 04, ground, TX, RX and uh, power. And now the back side of the PCB uh, exposes the ESP8266. This is the antenna, this is the 8266EX. Now the other side, uh, this is the main side, you'll see the separated trail traces for the mains, uh, also some physical separation which is nice, and the button which is also GPIO0 for flashing, that's very convenient. There are also new uh, terminals, the spring loaded and you have to push the cables quite deep. I'm starting with the power cable end, so they are all labeled, this power cable has no earth, so I'm connecting live to live, neutral to neutral in the input. Now once the cable is slotted, uh, I'm putting the output, so in this case a light, and again the life into life, neutral into the neutral. As you can see, a bit of a bummer in here, it's a design where it allows the cables to cross, and ideally you should avoid this, uh, but well, that's the design we deal with. So once this is screwed in, it's time to pair it with the mobile. And for that, just power the son of N and hold the button for about 5 seconds. So let's take a look at the EWLink app. And I had massive problems actually pairing it on Android 9. Uh, how I paired that device was actually going back to Android 8.0 on another headset and pairing it that way. Because I had this problem with EWLink app since forever, since I moved to Android 9. And I know the pairing process works on all the versions of Android, but it struggles on Android 9. So that's probably is the reason why the app have a, such a big negative uh, feedback from the users. Now once this is paired obviously you can use it across all the Android versions and I have my son of POW uh, linked and you've got a couple of information so you can see amperage, you can see voltage and the wattage of the light bulb I'm using. Currently I'm using the IKEA light bulb and it's not set to brightness um, of maximum that's why you can see it's only draw 5 watts instead of 12 which is maximum for this light bulb. Now going into the uh, device settings you can uh, set a couple of things so let's jump into the settings and you can see that I can see electricity rates in here and I can enter the electricity rates however there is no versions for the day electricity rates and the night so you'll have to average it out if uh, that's your tariff. There's a couple of other settings that are not very important in here but also what was interesting is to see uh, the threshold for overall protection system and now, to be fair, it will disable the power out 
uh, output to the device. However, if you're gonna enter like max voltage current or power settings, the, if the threshold is reached, the power will be sent for a couple of uh, seconds or milliseconds to the device. So if I'm gonna set a max voltage to 220 volts in here and select it, so let's uh, do this, you will see what's gonna happen. Okay, and let's apply this now. It, when I try to turn it on, it instantly turns it off. Like I said, it takes less than a second, but it won't completely protect your circuit, so you can actually burn the device. So don't use that as an overcurrent or voltage protection, as it might not work for you. Now, there's a couple of other things that you can actually pay attention to, and there's the statistics. Statistics are able to monitor real-time uh, statistics of the device and will give you usage uh, you can mess message the usage itself from the time you start uh, to the time you stop. So that's another thing you can do. And there's some extended statistics that you can access through a history record. So uh, I don't have much right now in here so because I just started this. But I would imagine there will be a diagram showing you consumption and the uh, electricity fee you would pay based on that. So that's available in the app as well. You can scroll through different uh, months. Just a nice addition to this. Now you've got obviously a share to share the devices between different accounts. You've got your schedules, timers, and loops, which is basically schedules with a um, date, etc. So that's all available in the app itself. Uh, it's okay when it works, but I can understand people being frustrated when they are unable to link to their devices. So behind me, you've got the POW, um, some of connected, and there is a smart bulb from IKEA connected uh, to that lamp. So as you can see, the uh, on and off readouts are pretty instant. So um, there is basically no delay in that functionality. However, the estimated uh, wattage, amperage, and voltage uh, draw spy bulbs they get updated every five to ten seconds. So if I'm gonna drop the brightness, currently set it at nearly twelve watts. Uh, it's still 12 watts and it's still and it's in a second it's 3 watts right now of the power draw so that information is being uh, sent to the son of or son of updates this information within a couple of seconds after the change which is accurate enough for me so e-wheeling app it's a problematic thing but we're not buying these for e-wheeling app we're buying things because uh, they're very easy to hack and my next tutorial, obviously, it's gonna be Son of Entasmota, so you'll see what kind of information you can pull off uh, uh, this uh, box when it running, uh, when it's running custom software. So uh, subscribe to the channel and you'll get notification because I'm in the middle of writing it. Uh, there are two projects that I've got in mind for this. And uh, first project is going to be monitoring the power of the 3D print. So it will calculate how much power I've used for the 3D print and add it to estimated cost of the print. Uh, with uh, the um, filament cost. So something I'm almost finished and I'm super, super stoked to show you the, that, guys. There's a couple of notifications here. You can actually check out how, how, it, see, uh, how it looks like and you're gonna see that soon. And the second one involves a washing machine because we're gonna be connecting a washing machine to this for a reason. So stay connected, guys, if you want any notification about why am I up to. Uh, join my social media, not enough tech, pretty much everywhere, and you'll get instant notification with something in this app. As for now, thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'm gonna see you in the next video. Take care, and bye.